1986 season doesn't look all that special until you really get into it. There was that race in Australia, obviously, but that's a story for another day. It had the most powerful cars ever raced in the Grand Prix, with a battle naturally aspirated engines and turbochargers that could run up to over 1,000 horsepower during qualifying. Along with very light packaging, the cars were so quick it was incredibly scary. The races were mostly won by Mansell, PK, Senna and Prost, who became known as the Gang of Four, providing solid gold entertainment all year long. The Spanish Grand Prix was the second race of the season, returning to the calendar after 5 years in the newly built circuit of Jerez. After an exciting start in the Brazilian Grand Prix, things were looking positive for the new year of Formula 1. The starters were Senna, PK, Mansell, Prost, Rosberg and Arnoux. On a separate note, welcome to Season 3 of MSTF1. We hope 2017 won't be a shit. The BBC were apparently too busy to do any kind of pre-race coverage for this one, so we're going straight to the main event. There is a surprisingly small crowd. Some people say the prices are too high. Others say that the circuit is in an inconvenient place. Others say that there hasn't been enough publicity. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The 1986 Spanish Grand Prix is go and Senna rockets straight out in the lead while the rest of the top six remain in place into the first turn. Jacques Lafitte chips away a piece of Theo Fabi's front wing and everyone else settles into a nice line. Marshals back then didn't wear any safety gear but at least they could run away from things. Nanini can't go out cause there's something wrong with his coffee. Meanwhile, Alan Jones already fucked up. And Jonathan Palmer... spontaneously exploded I guess. His coffee is finally ready so the Chesaris retires from the race. Now please stop retiring, I can only make it funny for so long. Stupid Palmer making me clean up his shit. Okay, I get it, Palmer retired, you've only shown us three goddamn times already. Teo Fabi and Fastest aren't concepts I'd ever thought I'd see combined. Ricardo Patrese unfortunately retires his Brabham BT55, which is the most beautiful car in F1 history because I said so. But not all is sad, the Angeles is still going. And nobody bothered to get the Lola out of the track yet. The 1980s everyone! Even 30 years before, the American Dream still gave no quarter. The Ferraris brakes break and Stefan Johansson collapses in despair. So much for hyping him up last year. Is that the new Grey's Anatomy Hospital? With all this commotion you think he's on the brink of death but he only banged up his ribs. Bowls, cricket and golf. Looks like a good hour long nap after this race ends. Christian Denner retires the Acela and this joke has no punchline because Acela is the joke. The salt still runs course through the Angelus' veins. Rosberg going fastest? I thought this was 1986, not 2016. I have to tell you an identifying uh, trick on these two cars, which I missed myself there. Because Rosberg and Prost, with their very similar helmets, look so alike, the very helpful McLaren team have fitted Prost cars with red mirrors and Rosberg car with white mirrors. So if you're in doubt, look for that. You could also look for the big numbers 1 and 2 on the nose of the cars, but that would be too obvious. Nigel Mansell makes a pass on Alan Prost, and he didn't fuck it up! Congratulations! Patrick Tambay is back out! The American Dream still lives, even if on a limp! There goes the Angelus, displaying his fucking beautiful car. And here is a replay of nothing at all, nothing at all, nothing at all. Philip Strip still goes out with engine problems. And I miss the times when I could still make fun of Renault for blowing up. Rene Arnoux stops for the total package. The numbers, Mason! What do they mean? For a team named Arrows, they sure like to get in the fucking way! Nigel Manso, using back markers for advantage before it was cool. This car is beautiful, and if you disagree, you are an idiot! Or at the very least, nearsighted. It seems the Arrows are pointing backwards for Tehi Butsen today. Mansell is, quite literally, on fire today. In the good sense. Oh right, Lotus has another car in this race. It's Johnny Dummies. Are we going to see any team work here as Senna passes Dumfries and Nigel Mansell catches the Scotsman? There was going to be a joke in here, but to be fair, Murray called it in advance. Lafitte almost performs the Deo Coin special. The, the adrenaline will be flowing through Nigel Mansell's veins by the bucket full. What the fuck? By the bucket full. Oh, bucket full, as in a bucket full of adrenaline. I think there's too much wax in my ears. 
Keep your hands inside the ride at all times, please. Nigel, no! You've gone too far! Enough is enough! No! 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 Damn you, Martin Brando! And now for his next trick, Nelson PK makes his car disappear in a puff of smoke. Things are also pointing down for Mark Suda. And Lafitte's day has also turned blue. Great stuff. So two thirds of the Spanish Grand Prix completed. We're going to move on a little. In the interim, Martin Brundle has dropped out, but Johnny Dumfries has moved into fifth place and the possibility of world championship points. BBC skipping through the race, you sniveling bastards. This is blasphemy. This is outrageous! This is actually pretty cool since the race was getting kinda boring anyway. Johnny Dummies has now retired, so now there is indeed only one Lotus car in this race. Keki Rosberg is a formidable backmarker. Except to Senna. To Senna, he is a fucking backmarker. FOM's law dictates that if an exciting moment can be ruined by the broadcast, it will be ruined. I can see why they skipped through the race now. Thanks, BBC. The BBC? Yes! 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 Double yes! Double yes! Double yes! Time to enact plan B, to bring the Ayrton to his knees. He expects to gain 19 seconds and 9 laps. <laughs> Big deal, he got through Prost. That's a very nice second place you've got there. Ah, oh, shit. The Lotus and the Williams are incredibly close coming out of the last corner. And despite all of Mansell's efforts, the winner of the 1986 Spanish Grand Prix is... Ayrton Senna do Brasil! What do you mean they didn't play the theme back then? Do I look like I care for historical accuracy? Play it! Sorry about that scream at the end, I think that was a bit, a little bit overplayed, anyway. Some close battles in the beginning, some boring racing in the middle, and some close battles in the end. This was a decent race. Uh, your your standard 1980s one, I mean, um, they're not all bangers, they're not all zingers. Well, anyway, again, um, I'm happy to be back, and um, I'm excited for, for you to see what's coming next on the classics. I think the, the, few, the next few batches of classics are pretty cool. Well, that's it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you on the next race.